Hey friends, welcome back to Circuit Loop. I am Roshni and today we are going to discuss how a series circuit is different from a parallel circuit using various parameters. So let's proceed. Guys, before proceeding towards the differences between series and parallel circuits, let us first have a basic idea about what an electric circuit is. So an electric circuit is defined as the closed loop arrangement that provides path for the electric current to flow. Here we have shown a simplest form of electric circuit containing a battery, a bulb and a switch in closed configuration, thereby showing a closed loop electric circuit. Guys, if this switch is open, then the circuit will not be completed and no flow of current will take place. Thus, this bulb will not glow. However, if this switch is closed, like the one which is shown over here, then the circuit will get completed, thereby allowing the flow of current to take place and hence this bulb will glow. The energizing element such as battery or generator is necessary that provides required power for the circuit operation. Friends, there are multiple criteria over which an electric circuit can be classified. An electric circuit can be of AC or DC type depending on the type of excitation provided to it or an electric circuit can be series or parallel based on the arrangement of circuit elements. Here we will discuss about series and parallel circuits and their differences. Let us first understand what a series circuit is. So guys, a series circuit is defined as an arrangement where the various circuit components are placed one after the other. More simply we can say that in series connection the multiple components are connected in such a manner that tail of one component is directly connected to the head of another component. And this whole arrangement is made with respect to the two ends of the battery. Just have a look at the circuit representation of serially connected resistors across this battery V. It is clearly represented over here that tail of R1 is connected to the head of R2 tail of R2 is connected to the head of R3 and tail of R3 is connected to the head of R4 and this whole arrangement is connected across the battery. Hence we can say that this circuit provides a single path for the flow of electric current. Now let us proceed towards the parallel circuit. So a parallel circuit is defined as such an arrangement of components where heads and tails are connected to two individual common points. This gives rise to multiple branches in the circuit. Have a look at the circuit representation of parallel circuit consisting of resistors as its major component along with a battery. Here in this figure it is clearly shown that heads of R1, R2, R3 and R4 all are connected to a common point A and in a similar way the tails of R1, R2, R3 and R4 connected to a common point E. Guys due to the presence of parallel branches over here Current in the circuit individually flows through each branch of the circuit. Till now we have got the basic idea of both series and parallel circuits. Let us now discuss the difference between the two. So as we have discussed recently that this type of circuit arrangement represents series circuit and this type of circuit arrangement represents parallel circuit. So let's talk about the first parameter which is orientation of component. So in series circuit the components are arranged in one after the other manner. While in parallel circuit the components are arranged in head to head and tail to tail manner. This means that heads of all the components are connected all together to a common point and tails of all the components will get connected to another common point. This means there will be separate common points for heads and tails. Now talking about the next parameter which is the number of paths. So in this figure it is clearly represented that there is a single path for the flow of current to take place. While in this particular circuit, the current flows through multiple paths. Thus we can say that the number of paths through which current flows is single in case of series and is multiple in case of parallel circuit. And the number of parallel paths will depend on the number of components present in the circuit in case of parallel circuit. Now if we are talking about current, then it is important to distinguish the two circuits on the basis of current that will flow through them. So if we talk about the current which is flowing through the circuit, then in case of series circuit, due to single path orientation, a single current will flow through all the components that are present in the circuit. While in parallel circuit, due to the presence of multiple branches, individual current will flow through each branch. More simply, we can say that this overall current will get distributed amongst all the branches of the circuit. 
Thus, unlike series circuit, here different current will flow through different component of the circuit. It is to be noted here that for this particular case, the current I will be the sum of I1, I2, I3 and I4. Now let's proceed further and understand some of the next parameters. So the next one is voltage. So if we talk about the voltage drop across the components in series and parallel circuit, then in series circuit, the voltage drop across each component will be different. And the reason behind the same is that as each component has individual connecting point, therefore the drop will be different. While in case of parallel circuit, the voltage across each of the component in the circuit will be similar. And this is because there is head to head and tail to tail connection of various components. And due to this reason, the voltage across each component will be same. Now guys, if we talk about fault detection or troubleshooting, then it is known that series connection or series circuit exhibit difficulty in troubleshooting in comparison to parallel circuits. The reason for such behavior of series circuit is that all the components in series are connected through a common wire and a single current is flowing through each of the components. Thus, if any of the component in the circuit malfunctions, then it will be difficult to predict which component in the serially connected manner is not working properly. However, in case of parallel circuits, it is said that troubleshooting is easy because here we are having separate connection of the components through individual wires and due to this reason, different current flows through each individual branch. And so, at the other end, it becomes easy to predict which component is not working properly. Thus, parallel circuits offer easy fault detection. Now the question arises, what happens to the whole circuit operation whenever there is a fault in the single component? So our next parameter is fault in single component. So whenever fault occurs in any of the serially connected elements, then it leads to cause disturbance in the complete circuit operation. This is so because the complete circuit operation is taking place through a single path in series circuit. However, this is not the case with parallel circuit because even if a component is malfunctioning, then the other part of the circuit will remain properly active and will perform their part of the work. Therefore, in parallel circuit, other components of the circuit will support circuit operation even if fault in one of the components occur. Now, lastly, talking about the equivalent resistance because here we have considered resistors as the multiple circuit elements. Thus, for the series circuit, it is said that the equivalent resistance will always be more than the highest value of the individual resistance present in the circuit. As against, this is not the case with parallel circuit as equivalent resistance in this case will always be less than the highest value of individual resistance present in the circuit. Well guys, this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you want to know more about series versus parallel circuits, you may visit our site circuitglobe.com where you will get to know the differences between the two using comparison chart and key differences. So please like, share and subscribe this video and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also put on your valuable comments below. I'll be back with another interesting topic. Till then take good care of yourself. Bye bye.